everyone, Aimer here again with another Mission Impossible episode review. This time I'm reviewing Season 2, Episode 14, uh, which is called Echo of Yesterday. So Jim gets his instructions from a parked car's glove compartment. The mission is to stop the resurgence of a Nazi movement being spearheaded by Marcus von Frank, who stands to inherit the industrial empire of his mentor, Otto Kelman. We get the usual team, oddly with Rollins' old dossier picture, but no Barney this time, which is kind of strange. During the apartment scene, the team discusses preparations, and they also tell us that even though Kelman is a quiet and docile man, the threat from him and the paranoid and unstable Von Frank is quite real, and that Kelman's wife was killed several years ago by Hitler himself. We cut to Von Frank and Kelman taking a ride and discussing the rise of their movement's popularity and the transfer of power to Von Frank, which will become official in a few days. Von Frank tells his driver uh, to keep a close eye on Kelman until things actually do become official. Von Frank meets with American Nazi leader Jim, who says he needs Von Frank's support to unite the people in his movement. Von Frank says he wants to see if Jim is worthy, and he has his assistant set them up for a fencing duel where Jim takes a small cut to the arm, but holds his own, impressing Von Frank. Kelman decides to go to a nearby park bench to relax, as he does frequently, and meets with photographer Cinnamon, who has fixed herself up to resemble his wife from long ago. She's also using that space to take a picture. They banter for a bit, and Kelman seems to have a brief flashback to the past, uh, seeing his wife. Thanks to a previously strategically placed nail, Cinnamon's dress is gashed and Kelman gallantly offers to drive her home. Turns out, surprise, surprise, that Kelman's late wife also studied photography, and Kelman is impressed at Cinnamon's work. Cinnamon gets a phone call from someone named Eric, who is clearly bothering her, and Kelman offers to take her to his house to keep her safe. Cinnamon later explains over dinner that Eric spoke out against some neo-Nazis and has gotten himself in trouble. Kelman tries to calm her down, saying that today's groups are not like the crazies of the past. Okay. Kelman predictably asks Cinnamon to stay at her, his place for her continued safety. Driver Carl informs Von Frank about this. Meanwhile, Rollin and Willie watch Hitler film footage at a nearby furniture warehouse. If you don't like where this is going, you're not alone. Anyway, during the night, Cinnamon goes to Kelman's study and takes some pictures, also finding and studying some older photographs of the room. She's found by Carl, who alerts Kelman, but Cinnamon is able to explain it away as experimental flash photography. Meanwhile, Kelman's flashbacks continue. The next morning, Von Frank arrives at the home with Jim, interrupting a morning photo shoot. Cinnamon continues to take pictures, angering Von Frank, and allowing Jim to take the film reel with him and give, her, give him some, some things for later. As they leave the home, Jim tells Von Frank he has misgivings about Cinnamon. The film is given to Barney and Willie, who start to set up an area to resemble Kelman's home. Von Frank discovers that Cinnamon lied to Kelman and only rented her apartment a week ago, which angers him tremendously. He heads to Cinnamon's apartment with Jim to see what they can find, and they discover Cinnamon's plane ticket from London from last week. Cinnamon spikes Kelman's tea putting him to sleep, and signals the team, who arrive with the van and start unloading stuff. Willie knocks out Carl, and the room is set back to the way it was in 1932. Kelman wakes up in a haze after some time, seeing his wife and surroundings, including a newspaper from 35 years previous, as Rollin enters as Hitler with SS guard Willie. Rollin accuses Mrs. Kelman of plotting against him, which she confirms she's doing, and he kills her. Kelman is about to shoot his Fuhrer, but falls back to sleep as the team quickly bursts into action and reset the room back to the present. Cinnamon provides Kelman with the antidote as Jim arrives with Von Frank, and the scene from 1932 plays out again as Cinnamon admits that she came to expose the relationship between Von Frank and Kelman. Von Frank shoots her, and Kelman stands up with his pistol. Von Frank is apparently not as convincing as Adolf, and Kelman shoots him as well. Then he calls the police and daughters upstairs as the IMF makes its exit. Mission... I 
I'm going to give this episode, I was really, really torn about whether I wanted to give it a D minus or an F. I'm going to say D minus for only one reason. Um, the only thing in this episode that was any good, the fencing duel visually the, at the beginning between Jim and Von Frank, was, as I said, visually, it was pretty good. I did kind of like that. It was kind of cool. I have nothing good to say about anything else in this episode. Um, Hans Gudegast, who you might remember as Eric Braden, the fellow from The Young and the Restless, uh, he was in uh, The Short Tale Spy from season one. Uh, his acting as Von Frank is good, uh, but his you know, paranoid, unstable character is relegated after that scene uh, with the fencing. All he does is just basically throw tantrums, and it's just ridiculous. The story just falls off the steepest cliff you can possibly imagine after that point. Uh, the Nazi backdrop doesn't do anything in this episode except give Martin Landau the chance to dress up as Hitler for a ludicrous and pointless ending what was that i i i just it, it it hurts my brain just to even think about it the character of kelman just seems to daughter aimlessly from scene to scene um you know he's kind of in and out and he's in and out it, it it's mr magoo-esque it's 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 just so pointless and in the end you know, he, he's been drugged and manipulated into shooting his pupil. And what does he do? He just calls the police and says, oh, there's been a shooting. And then he just kind of wanders upstairs. Uh, just, it, it just, I don't know. I, I think it's just a, a microcosm for the whole episode. That's quite fitting. The audience is like, I'm definitely willing to do the same thing. I just want to walk away from this and forget it ever happened. Um, just everything about this is so silly, and I just find it to be a complete yawn fest. Um, you know, after after that that opening scene with Jim and Von Frank. Um, interesting story from the uh, Mission Impossible dossier uh, about how um, during the filming of this episode, Landau dressed up as Hitler actually went to the commissary to the uh, to the lunch room basically at Paramount Studios. And unfortunately, there were some um, relatives, or maybe there were actually some Holocaust survivors or the relatives there, and they were absolutely spooked and freaked by this. Again, just uh, this is a bad episode, and the writers should feel bad for subjecting us to this. I have nothing else to say about it. But anyway... Thank you for watching. Please like this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comments. Whether you agree or you disagree with me, I would love to hear what you have to say as always. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.